Hello everyone, an urgent fundraiser here for Night Vision Equipment. $7,500 are needed and we are approaching that goal. If people who watch could donate just $1, I'm sure we could easily reach that target tonight. And this is Vital Kit, which could help save lives. Now, on to today's video. I thought I'd take a look here at what's being shared online as unmanned torpedoes of Ukraine. A bit of an odd wording, since torpedoes are unmanned anyway. Except, of course, the kamikaze ones that Japan used in World War II. It's better to call these, I think, torpedo drones. These photos were shared by the Ukrainian military. It's been given the name Toloka, which is a form of mutual assistance among villagers. So a pretty interesting name there. Now there's no word how far along this project is, whether we can expect to see these in action this year, or if it's just in the early stages of development. But Ukraine did develop those drone boats that we've seen in a pretty quick space of time, so it's definitely possible that a similar concept here could also be done quickly. Three types have been shown, demonstrated here. The small TLK-150 with a length of 2.5 metres, the TLK-400 with a length of between 4 to 6 metres, and the hung like a shire horse TLK-1000 with a length of 4 to 12 metres. The design of them is a tube shaped body, as is typical with torpedoes, but we also see large stabilisers in the middle. Thrusters are mounted on the end of each of these stabilisers. I expect these are to increase the manoeuvrability, but I can't be too sure. On the, con on the concept image of the TLK-400 and the TLK-1000, the larger ones, we can see the stabilisers are situated near the front of these and near the rear, with the thrusters being at the back, the TLK-1000 having four of them, two on either side. Now you can also spot a mast, which I believe will remain above water always, unless it is lurking. The advantage of these over the drone boats is the body of the torpedo is below the water, making them much harder to spot and intercept. Now going back to the image which I had on screen earlier, showing the concepts of all three designs, we can see that at least here, on the concept image, the two large versions, the TLK-400 and the TLK-1000, don't have the mast that's featured on the TLK-150. As for the mass purpose, I expect it's some kind of um, guidance role, you know, communicating with a guidance system. Whether the end design of the larger ones will also have a sort of mast, I'm not sure. But it is interesting to see that these ones lack it, at least on this little um, concept design image. Now, the thing I'm sure you're most interested in, the range. So here, TLK-150, shown in black, has a range of 100 kilometers. So this will likely be used as point coastal defence. It packs between 20 to 50 kilograms of explosives and will likely safeguard against amphibious landing craft and that sort of thing. The TLK-400 has a range of 1,200 and packs a 500 kilogram explosive punch. By comparison, the drone boats that Ukraine has been using, I've seen a payload, I've seen a payload given of around 45 kilograms. So if these figures are accurate, then they're certainly going to cause some damage. Finally, the big boy, the TLK-1000, which has a range of a whopping 2,000 kilometers and will carry up to 5,000 kilograms of explosives. I'll get more onto that later. Now Russia has its own large torpedo, really a torpedo drone too, called the Poseidon, which is capable of delivering conventional and nuclear warheads. Bigger than the Ukrainian ones with a size of up to 20 metres, it's believed the first batch were delivered earlier this year. Now, as I always tell the ladies, bigger isn't always better. The Poseidon has been described as indestructible by Russia, the sort of description that Russia has pegged to the likes of Car 52 and T-90M and the Terminator, and we know how well they have fared so far. Like a metaphor for Russia's army, the Poseidon will likely be big and impressive looking, but overall, a bit of a damp squib. But back to Ukraine's torpedoes. We don't have too much information just yet about these. It has been stated that the torpedoes can be in standby mode for up to three months, which I assume means these can be launched and then linger around like a stargazer fish waiting for its prey to arrive. The torpedoes scan the area automatically with a 3D sonar, hydrophone and a camera. Now I'm not sure if this means these are truly autonomous, as in it can be launched 
lurk around the ocean while scanning the environment, detect a Russian ship and think, aha, got you, and then just attack it without any input from the operators. Or, if it detects a ship, sends a signal back to the operators who then give the go-ahead. The article later says targets are identified using video cameras, thermal imaging cameras, as well as visually with a neural network. So I do assume it is the latter, rather than true autonomous targeting. Now back to the payload. The largest one said 5,000 kilograms payload. That's 5.5 tons of explosives. If that's accurate, and not a misprint or a mistranslation, then that's pretty impressive. That's bigger than the World War II British Grand Slam earthquake bomb, which was around 4,000 kilograms. Here's a short video showing a 4,500 kilogram blast. So if this figure is true, and this thing hits, say, the Admiral Makarov, I think it's safe to say it will be joining the Moskva. I would say by being promoted to submarine, but really, it's more likely it will just end up in a thousand pieces. Now back to the map of the Rangers. Just look at what's within its range. Not just the Black Sea Fleet operating out of Sevastopol, but Novo Rusisk too. And also, our old friend the Crimean Bridge. I'm not an explosive expert, but I think it's safe to say if the TLK-1000 paid that a visit, it would cause some damage. So the Crimean Bridge spans 19 kilometers, and as you can see on this photo, it's held up by big thick concrete supports. Ukraine's last attack on October the 8th destroyed a couple of spans, and it took until February to repair them. That's four months just to repair a couple of spans with the train section still undergoing repairs now, so it's, not, so it's still not fully complete. So if a supporting structure was taken out by one of these torpedoes, I envision that would be a much, much more difficult job to repair, and the bridge will be out of action for a long time, maybe even indefinitely. Well, that depends, of course, whether these torpedoes are close to being ready or not. If they are, you have to think the Crimean Bridge would be a key target before Ukraine's counter-offensive which many people think will be aiming towards um, Crimea to cut off Crimea. Take the bridge out and Crimea can't be resupplied, or at least it will be very, very difficult to resupply it. So I believe the TLK-150, as mentioned, will be for point events intended against small patrol boats and small landing craft. The TLK-400 seems like it's going to be used against ships. And the TLK-1000 with its massive punch that it packs this is likely designed for concrete surface structures, so harbour docks, that sort of thing, maybe bridges. And I guess if you fire it against a ship, it will certainly do a job there as well. I wonder if this was designed specifically with the Crimean Bridge in mind. Now it's too soon to say how much of a game changer these are going to be. Not only because we don't know how far along the project is, but in practice, how effective these will be. But they're certainly most interesting. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If so, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again. And be sure to check out the PayPal link in the description for the um, fundraiser. Thanks very much and take care, everybody.